Hi, I'm your moderator, Ray Stahl, and welcome to the Digital Metrology Standards Consortium uh, Coffee uh, Chat Series. This is our fourth in the series. Uh, today's pr pr presentation is closed loop manufacturing, and it will be by uh, Paul Seven and H Hannah Abido Modula. Sorry. Uh, next slide, please. Just a few housekeeping uh, rules. Uh, you are in listen-only mode, uh, and if you look on your control panel on the go to meet, go to webinar, there is a question section. If you type in your questions, we will uh, answer them. Uh, we at, at the end of the presentation today, we'll do a Q and A session. So please uh, enter your questions. Uh, if we can answer them immediately, we will. Otherwise, that we'll have have them. Uh, I'll be reading them and the. Presenters today will be answering your questions as uh, as we get to them. Uh, we will also be uh, emailing you with a link to today's presentation that typically comes out within a day or two at the worst. Um, and uh, and we'd lo like to have you enjoy our today's presentation. Next slide. Again, closed loop. Uh, and um, Paul and and Andy will be presenting. Take it away, guys. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, again, my name is Henny Abdelmatil. Good try, Ray. Appreciate it. Um, and I'm with Minitoyo. And here we are live at the uh, Novi Michigan Tech Center, the Minitoyo uh, Novi Tech Center. Thank you for the introduction, Ray. I'm Paul Seven with Karen Engineering. All right. Yeah. And today we're going to be talking about a lot of good stuff here today. Uh, we're going to be looking at this closed loop manufacturing and where QIF comes into play with this and closing uh, this loop for us here. So uh, thank you very much, Ray and Mark and everyone at the DMSC for, for having us uh, present. So we want to start off with you know, some of the manufacturing challenges that we see in the industry today. So first and foremost, identifying sources of variation and improving product quality. You know, uh, variation is obviously inherent in all manufacturing processes. It's the enemy of good quality. And so we really want to identify where this variation is coming from and limiting it. So when we look at these challenges here today, we're gonna look at what are our solutions to, uh, to these challenges. So limiting the variation and ultimately improving product quality. And directly related to the product quality is the tools that create the features of the part themselves. We want to take a look at how to adequately and correctly calculate and send compensations for the cutting tools back to the machine tool and correct for the process variations in real time. The next challenge that we see a lot is aggregating data from multiple sources for a clear picture of the manufacturing processes. So you may have in-process inspection at multiple different operations, a final inspection, incoming inspection, different tools and devices and computers, all producing data, all these different measurements. And so being able to aggregate them in a typical scenario can be very difficult. And so this is a challenge that we see from a lot of manufacturers that we can hopefully then provide a solution for. Another potential source of error uh, that can be induced into the process is when the user manually creates corrections back to the process. That's why it's important to automate that process of correction and let a, a semi or intelligent system make those decisions and transmit that data directly back to the CNC control. And finally, quickly producing reports for managers, auditors, and the customer. So even in the year 2021, we're still seeing a lot of handwritten data collection, paper records that are gonna be in file cabinets and storage areas. And it becomes really difficult to find the data that you're looking for, for that job or that part and giving it to the people who need it when they need it. And so we wanna be able to address all these different challenges. And so we talk about solutions here, we're looking at the two different tools that Meditoyo makes with MeasureLink and then uh, AutoComp, which is a tool that Karen Engineering makes. So with MeasureLink, the solution to some of these challenges here are going to be the tagging of data and visualizing the quality in real time, centralizing this data and having dynamic data on a customer network. So you can uh, filter and search for this different data and produce this custom auto-generated report templates on demand. The AutoComp application from Karen Engineering allows a user to select or create 
uh, a variety of different models to control the part size automatically. Uh, it can include trending. It can make adjustments based on single piece measurement. Uh, skip can be included. We can target various sizes. That calculation of the compensation is based on the measurement data that can come directly from the gauge. But as we're talking about today, we'll be processing the measure link output of the QIS standard in order to make the calculation. And that transfer occurs automatically. There's no intervention necessary by the user or an operator in order to initiate the adjustment on the machine control. So while our two different tools do these things really well just by themselves here, we're gonna be able to, to marry these two things together. So just a little bit more background on MeasureLink. It is a data collection and, and SPC software solution. So we do have the real-time online data collection, real-time SPC and charts, which we'll see later on today, real-time quality control, supervisory reports and alerts. So when something is going out of spec, or something is trending or anything that's going on, really we can get an alert for that. And it's really designed for integrated networks to create a quality information sharing system, which includes a comprehensive metrology solution for your company. And finally, we can use MeasureLink to assemble a software package from any of the different MeasureLink modules to satisfy any of those organization specific needs. AutoComp, again, has that ability to select and accept measurement from multiple gauging devices or through a QIF file or a combination of the above. Um, it eliminates human error by taking the decision-making process about when to compensate the system and how much to compensate away from a human decision. It statistically controls the offset in order to keep features within part print tolerances and it interfaces directly back to the CNC in order to optimize the process most efficiently. It can also notify the operator when a tool has exceeded a specified wear amount in order to either have the operator change the tool manually or if the automation is available to select redundant tooling through the process. And like I had mentioned, both of these tools do their part very, very well. And so we're going to be bringing these things in together through this closed loop manufacturing. So again, in this day and age in 2021, automation is gonna be key. So we want to be able to leverage QIF to be able to enhance this automation that we can provide. So we'll start off here with step number one, it's gonna come down to production, right? Parts are gonna be manufactured, and once they're manufactured, then they're gonna be measured on a dimensional measurement equipment or a DME. From production, we go to testing and inspection. These measurement results are gonna be produced by the DME. Doesn't really matter what the tool is that you're gonna be using, whether it's a CMM or a caliper, a profilometer, you name it, uh, we'll be able to take that data into MeasureLink. And so we can start to manage that data. So we can send that data electronically. That's gonna be the ideal scenario here. And then we can produce these process capability statistics and um, and they'll all be produced from multiple different measurements and multiple different types of equipment. From there, this is where we get into the QIF portion. So MeasureLink will be able to kick out a QIF file that will have results and process capability statistics. What QIF does is it ends up closing this digital loop from metrology to manufacturing. And then from there, AutoComp can take that information and act on it producing those automatic tool offsets. So AutoComp uses the results to automatically adjust tool offsets for the next part uh, or parts after that, preventing defects and maintaining a high quality manufacturing process. So this is what we're gonna be looking at today. We dive in a little bit closer. We look in after production, we look at testing and inspection. So we can measure with any equipment, like I had said, whether that's gonna be hand tools, CNC measuring equipment, even, on machine tool probe, is there any third party gauges? It's not only limited to just Minitoyo tools, um, really anything that can produce data, we can, for the most part, get it inside of MeasureLink. Um, so we can send the measurement data electronically to MeasureLink, whether it's wireless transmitters or data cables and interfaces, really doesn't matter. And then we can start to manage this data. So MeasureLink will plot the data points and calculate these SPC metrics. We'll be able to manage the measurement data from all these different sources. We'll have the visualization of quality at the point of manufacture and really throughout all the different stages of inspection, whether that's you know, from incoming to final. And then we'll have an auto output of the QIF results file 
to a network folder after the part measurement. So rather than talking about these things, we'll go ahead and take a look at, uh, you know, we'll kind of do this here, live demo in real time and see what this looks like here. So we'll go ahead and switch off to our other screen here. So what we're doing here is we're gonna be measuring this uh, aluminum prismatic part that was probably taken uh, machined on a mill here. We'll be measuring three different features. We'll have uh, a plane measurement, a distance from, from two different planes, and we'll be looking at controlling the, uh, the inside diameter of this, this left hole and this right hole. So we'll be able to capture this data using our linear height, our minatorial linear height here. Uh, we'll be able to measure uh, each of those features, send this data to MeasureLink, and then AutoComp will then be able to take that QIF file that MeasureLink will produce and be able to control the, the process in the part. Is that right? That's correct. All right, so we'll go ahead and flip this around and we'll go ahead and look at taking our measurements. So I'll go ahead and bring the probe into position here and we'll go ahead and uh, set our origin on the top of this part, hit enter. So now we set our origin, I'll take my first distance measurement here with the, the downward measurement probe. This measurement is being sent automatically to MeasureLink through an RS-232 connection. I'll pull the probe out and I'll get it inside our first left hole here that we're doing. I'll take my circle measurement and I'll sweep this hole to find the, the true bottom of the hole. It'll move up and I'll start to do the top of the hole as well. Once it recognizes the top and bottom, I can move over to the next and do the same thing. So I'll go ahead and finish up this measurement here. and then the final part here. All right, so all this, all these measurements then just uh, went to our MeasureLink software here. So we'll go ahead and switch off to, uh, to the MeasureLink screen and take a look and see what this looks like here. So this is the part that we measured. Inside of MeasureLink here, we can set up a part picture. We can say we know what we want the distance to, to take here on this plane. We have these different columns showing out which uh, IDs here that we're interested in measuring because we have lots of different holes. And this operator view that we see here is gonna be really great for, for that operator, right? We're gonna be able to see any sorts of trending here. We'll see our last measurement uh, came down into the yellow and we can see if there's any, uh, you know, anything that the operator needs to know. We're able to tag all of this data as well. So if we wanna to start to get an idea of uh, what machines do we use to manufacture this part? Which operators, which suppliers do we get uh, the aluminum from, for example? Any of that sort of information, we can tag each of these data points with that info. And then if anything does go out of spec, we can assign causes to it. And then we can create a number of different report templates and send those reports out to uh, you know, to whoever needs them, whether it's the manager or the customer or whatever the case is. Now what's happening in the background, the automation feature here is as soon as all of these measurements are taken, a QIF results file is gonna get spit out and this is where AutoComp is gonna end up uh, reading that information. So this goes back to that whole actionable information. So we're able to use that using QIF. So for those who don't know what is QIF, it is a free and open standard based upon uh, the XML, uh, you know, extensible markup language. And frankly, this is a big part of why Mitutoyo and Karen Engineering decided to, to support this standard. It is free and is relatively easy for our developers to be able to support it. And so it makes this communication very simple between our two softwares. So XML is maintained by the World Wide Web, so it's very well known, it's you know pretty much everywhere, and it's a data format that's both human and machine readable. So here we have a sample QIF file that is coming from MeasureLink. It'll have the part name, the feature names, the tolerance limits, and all that sort of good information here that, uh, that AutoComp can then read and other software as well can read um, in addition. So QIF extends XML to this to include all this quality information. So the measurement information within the QIF results file can be acted upon with AutoComp. 
The QIF results and statistics can also be used by additional software programs like ERP and MES programs. So all this information, rather than reduplicating part names, uh, measurement data, and all of this kind of stuff, uh, we can use all the data that's within this QIF standard and have it be available for everyone. So uh, the developers of all these different softwares and machines and all those sorts of things can utilize this information. So from here, the final step in our loop is going to be automatic tool offsets. And in a manner similar to that used in MeasureLink to configure the system, the AutoComp software allows the user to create a correlation between each part feature that's being inspected by the gauges and the tool offset in the machine that controls that feature size. Um, the tolerances and the control limits for the tooling uh, can match those that are being used in the MeasureLink software, or they could be more or less forgiving depending on the needs of the user and how closely they would like to maintain process control. As we mentioned previously, the tag data within the QIF file is used to identify those features within AutoComp that require uh, tool control. And AutoComp continuously just monitors the folder onto which the measure link will drop the QIF file. When that folder appears, or when the file appears in that folder, AutoComp will process the file, uh, pull the data from it for the relevant features, and determine whether any compensation is necessary based on the limits that have been set in the AutoComp routine. When those limits are exceeded, based on either a single piece measurement or statistical running average, if that's the preference, the calculated offset amounts automatically get transferred uh, via a variety of means into the appropriate CNC. And again, no intervention is necessary from the operator in order to achieve this. So Paul, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what AutoComp looks like with the data that we've already collected from MeasureLink that's already been sent over to AutoComp here. So there you go. So as you can see on this screen, we've got the history of the six most recent uh, parts that were measured and the data transferred into MeasureLink. Uh, by selecting one field or another, we can look at the uh, statistical representation for those particular features. Uh, in the comp column, we're showing the last compensation that was calculated and transferred into the CNC machine. We're also showing a running CPK value for each feature. And to the far right, uh, the tool life bar indicates the percentage of tool life that has been used for the tool that is associated with the selected feature. If I can temporarily suspend this routine for a moment, we can look briefly at the configuration for this part. And we can see here in the tag field where the tag has been selected based on the tag that is used in the QIF file. The upper and lower tolerances and nominal size are programmed under general parameters, along with the upper and lower comp limits in the dimension compensation parameters. Again, it's the upper and lower comp limits that control when a compensation is calculated and how much compensation will be sent to the machine. We can also program a fixed amount of tool wear, which would be a cumulative, and after which the operator would be informed to either change the tool or a redundant tool could be selected. As we mentioned previously, that compensation can be based on a trend value, uh, which is could be a single piece measurement or a statistical running average of two through 10 pieces. Uh, there's also a skip function available, which accommodates a queue of parts in between the machining process and the inspection process. The CNC information is programmed in another tab to indicate which tool offset controls part size. If it's a multi-path machine, the appropriate path or turret could be selected, as well as the axis of the tool that will be accepting the data. Alternately, that data could be sent directly to a machine variable uh, that could be a, a, a work offset or a macro variable as opposed to a tool offset.
Do we have any questions at this time? Go ahead and pull up. I'll just the... pull that one up again. Uh, no, we only got a compliment for you at the moment. It's uh, you're doing an excellent presentation. So. <laughs> And, yeah, so, and as a reminder, you please do fill in the uh, on the on your control panel. You have a, a place for Q and A. We'll answer the questions as they as you as they come. Uh, so please fill out that uh, that during the rest of the presentation. Yeah. So hopefully we've given you all just a, a little taste of what you can see uh, with the two different software tools and where QIF can go and support that. So. Just a couple other notes on, on QIF. As it relates to MeasureLink, we can also import QIF data as well. So if there are QIF results coming from a CNC machine, MeasureLink will be able to take in that data and process all that information inside of MeasureLink, and then as well as kick out then that data uh, through MeasureLink and going into an AutoComp or an ERP or something else. So obviously there's a lot of different applications here that we can use with QIF. and uh, using the various uh, software tools. Well, thank you. Thank you for today's presentation. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to give a few more minutes to, uh, oh, a few more questions are popping in. Uh, what are the, po here's a question. Uh, what are the possible ways to communicate with, and I need to move something over, uh, with CNC machines uh, uh, possible in AutoComp? Uh, there are a number of methods available. Uh, the method that will be used is determined primarily based upon the CNC technology uh, that is supported by a particular CNC. Uh, most typically, there are uh, API communication libraries that reside within most CNC controls, which will support an Ethernet connection from the PC on which AutoComp is running uh, directly to the CNC control. On some of the older legacy controls, uh, we need to employ other solutions such as RS-232 or discrete I.O., but in most cases, we're finding that uh, an Ethernet connection it can be supported. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, if you, I'll leave it open for just a couple more minutes. If you have questions, uh, please write them down. Other, otherwise, we'll be while you're thinking about questions, I'm going to talk about our, our next one, our August uh, coffee chat. Um, uh, next month, we will uh, have an introduction to C++ for QIF, so how to, how to build a, a tool to actually use, read and, and write uh, QIF files. And that'll be presented by uh, Tom Kramer, who is a uh, NIS uh, research guest uh, uh, for NIS and uh, has been involved with this and, and been an active uh, writer of a lot of the QIF standards. So it's a really a deep subject matter uh, kind of discussion. And uh, that'll be next uh, uh, August the uh, 24th. Um, you can go to the QIFs standards.org event page and register um, if you're interested in uh, uh, C++ and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be covering that next month so I uh, did get a few more questions the next question is how do you connect to machine tools um, I'm not sure if that is a different question or a similar question to that which we addressed uh, typically again it's determined primarily by the uh, architecture of the machine tool itself, the CNC control, and what it's capable of supporting. Um, in most current CNCs that are available on the market today, uh, they will supply uh, a library with the CNC control that is capable of accepting that offset data through an ethernet connection. And again, if it's an older control, um, there may be the capability for us to create some capability within that control, or it may have uh, some options available for the OEM to support external data transfer into the control. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, how do you uh, handle compensation direction, uh, ID versus OD? Ah, that's an excellent question, thank you. Uh, that's primarily determined between the measuring function itself of the gauge uh, for example, if, if the OD is oversized and as the tool wears, the OD uh, begins to increase in size, then 
AutoComp software knows inherently that the compensation to be sent back to the machine needs to be in the opposite polarity of the uh, growth in size. However, there is a function within AutoComp that allows the user to uh, select the ability to reverse that polarity again. So a double reversal, if you will. Uh, so I, typically, uh, based on the setup, it's all going to flow properly. But if we find, for example, on, on, a, on a CNC lathe where you may be back facing a feature, and as the tool wears, the part actually gets smaller in size, uh, that compensation needs to be reversed and then reversed again. Uh, the user can select a checkbox within the AutoComp routine to carry out that function. Great. All right, one more question. Uh, in addition to the point-to-point -point auto comp correction and the use of trends, is it possible to use uh, microlink data tests to trigger some correction in auto comp? I'm not sure I thoroughly understand the question. Uh, my interpretation of the question is to look at some uh, assignable cause corrective action data within MeasureLink or within the QIS file, QIF file to trigger uh, a response in AutoComp. Um, my general inclination would be to say that that is not a currently supported function, uh, but if there was a need uh, that we could justify in order to carry that out, it's something we'd be willing to consider. I, I think uh, they added a new question or expanded on the question. And let me try to read it to you. Can we use other parameters besides the final measurement of the part to make uh, make or not a correction uh, on the machine, like temperature or things like that? Uh, yes, there are a variety of uh, methods that can be employed through AutoComp. One is called a uh, comp by percentage or a comp additive function. And that comp additive function could be based on uh, reading the value that gets populated in a variable within that machine. And the function of populating the variable could be achieved through a thermocouple or some type of temperature measurement in order to compensate for thermal wear. Uh, keeping in mind, however, that thermal growth in a machined part is something that typically will show up in the uh, part measurement process uh, as it is something that occurs over time and generally uh, consistently in the same direction. So it's kind of a bonus in that AutoComp would have a tendency to compensate for thermal wear, whether it's due to uh, part growth, machine growth, or change in coolant temperature uh, by its normal course of operation. Thank you. Uh, so next question. Can this process be automated? Say, uh, say automated inspector using the QIF file and automate automate the continuous compensation through the production with minimal human in intervention. Yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, MeasureLink in a similar fashion to how AutoComp is looking for a QIF file, MeasureLink will do the same. So it'll be monitoring a network folder. Um, you know, so if a QIF file is coming out of um, you know, out of a machine tool probe or out of a, a CNC CMM or something like that, then yeah, MeasureLink will monitor that folder, uh, collect the data that's in there, process it inside of MeasureLink real time. And then uh, as soon as that, that part is, you know, finished being measured and, you know, all the measurements are completed within that file, then yeah, it'll automatically send that file out to AutoComp and then AutoComp will automatically compensate the machine. So uh, if necessary. So yeah, so everything that we've done today, while we're doing manual measurements with a height gauge, uh, everything can be completely automated, and that way operators can uh, can focus on other things other than inspection, right, to ensure that uh, process variation is low. Yeah, I would say that a significant portion, probably the majority of the systems that we implement, uh, do rely upon automated gauging, automated uh, part transference, uh, robots, things of that nature. Uh, in most cases, there's little or no operator intervention at all. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we do have a customer, actually, an automotive customer who is using this closed loop with QIF. So they're a customer of MeasureLink and AutoComp, and they are using um, uh, uh, several different sensors to inspect their part 
Uh, so once the operator loads that part in, then all those uh, inspections are taken automatically and then fed through this loop. Good, thank you. Uh, next question, are there limitations on the types of features you can compensate for? Only in the sense that <clears throat> the, the analogy I, I would like to use or prefer to use is that if it's something that uh, moves with respect to time, uh, if the feature size changes due to uh, a natural uh, influence in the process, then we can adjust for it with auto comp. Uh, features such as uh, true position, uh, roundness, um, concentricity, uh, more geometrical mm -hmm. forms are, are typically more a function of the setup on the machine tool and the part program G code itself. So they aren't generally adjusted or, or, or spoken to with auto comp. However, we have seen certain circumstances where um, there were other factors in play and it brought out the necessity to move features uh, based on the datum of another feature, for example. When, when one feature moves, then uh, maybe two or three other features need to move as well. And in those cases, we have been able to uh, automate the correction of, of that process. And in fact, uh, the customer involved had indicated that if their operators needed to do that manually and determine when to move features and by how much to move them, they, they couldn't have done it without having an automated solution. Okay. Um, and it looks like somebody did a follow-on question. Let me just read it to you. Uh, how would you set this up with a vendor's machine and inspecting the part and as an integrator, assembl assembler, you are, you are interested uh, in checking vendor quality? Uh, would you both run measure link versus the traditional inspection reports? Um, I, I'm thinking that's more like incoming inspection rather than uh, produced material. Um, yeah, Ray, is that is that is that your take on it? I guess I'm not 100%. Um, I'm just rereading. It. I'm just rereading it. Uh, vendor machine. So I'm going to ask the writer if you could qualify the question for us. I got another question. I'll I'll come back to this one. Um, thank you. So uh, uh, as you just said, yes, inspection of incoming parts from from a vendor. Okay, so um, incoming inspection, and then and the question regarding it is, uh, can you repeat that portion for me, Ray? Uh, so it just says uh, inspecting the part at, and as a, okay, so this was the OEM part, the integrator. Uh, you know, in checking vendor quality, would you would you use both uh, uh, both to run the measure link versus the traditional inspection report? Um, so I'm assuming oh. they were using. Uh, yeah, I, I would say you you would and could still use MeasureLink. Uh, so you know, essentially, you're going to be getting a lot of process you know capability information, uh, and you can tag all this data as well. So if you have multiple different vendors that you're uh, you know receiving a product from, then you can tag uh, the measurements that come from each of those different vendors, and you can start to see uh, what is going to be a, a CPK or a PPK, for example. Of each of those, or what is going to be the um, you know the average size of of different lots coming from uh, from each of those vendors, and so there's a lot of information that you can get from uh, when you are processing these statistics. So uh, absolutely, I think that's all good information to have, and then you can see what type of effect does that have for in process inspection and the final product at the end. So being able to collect all this information from start to finish can certainly be very valuable. One of the things that we encounter fairly regularly in the metal cutting world is uh, a company that is receiving material from a vendor, and, and it may be a single vendor, but it might be multiple heat treat lots. Mm -hmm. So within a lot, you're going to have a varying degree of hardness, and then when you move to the next lot, you may experience either greater or less hardness than in that prior heat treat lot. Mm -hmm. And having the ability with uh, a product like Measured Link and the QIS standard in order to put that tag data on there uh, can also provide information once we start machining that material as we know that we're gonna uh, experience excessive tool wear on a harder lot than we do on a softer lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's at some point. Correlation and, and deep dive in the data. Okay, uh, I have another question. Can auto uh, comp return calculated compensation data to MeasureLink? 
uh, the, there's a next a thinking about data storage. So I yep, think that's, that's an excellent question. And in fact, uh, AutoComp does create uh, out of the box a uh, CSV file that creates that that stores the entire uh, compensation history, the measurement data, and the compensation history for every feature that is processed within AutoComp. Um, I don't believe that QI, the, the measure link has the ability, well, it probably has the ability to do the CSV right. importation. Yeah, so measure link will have the ability to take really any ASCII file, right, including QIF, of course, uh, to import that data. So yeah, if there's a reason to uh, imp import that information, uh, then it could be possible. But yeah, it probably needs a little bit more information of what uh, what exactly you would like from AutoComp to go back into measure link. Okay, well, that uh, I'm going to leave a one more minute here. Any last minute questions? Otherwise, we'll be closing the, the question session here. So. All right, nobody's, nobody's adding uh, questions, so I think that concludes today's uh, presentation. Again, I want to just reiterate thank you, uh, by the way, Hannah and, and Paul, for pre presenting a great presentation. Uh, next month, we have the uh, introduction to C++ for QIF, so for you technical people who enjoy how to bind QIF to your application. And this concludes today's uh, uh, webinar, and I hope you have a great day, everybody. Thank you.